Welcome to the Authentic Life Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Wusk. I'm a master certified life coach, author, personal trainer, and nutrition specialist. For over a decade, I've been helping people with their dreams and goals for their life and health. I spent many years watching people get frustrated with their journey in life and giving up on taking actions towards their goals. So I dug in deep to find answers to why so many of us face this same frustration and struggle in life. So in this podcast, we're going to dive in deep on topics surrounding what it means to consistently live a fulfilling and authentic life where you are unstoppable in taking action towards your dreams and goals. So the only question is, are you ready to start living your most authentic and fulfilling life once and for all? Then let's get started, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. For those of you listening in for the first time, welcome, welcome. You picked a great episode to join in on for your first time because we're beginning another series this week. I know we just finished up a series on leadership recently. I had a three-part series on that and we're beginning a new series today. This is part one of that series and it's going to be three, possibly four parts, but I think I'm going to be able to fit it in in three parts. So we've got a series coming out on authentic goals. And the reason I'm putting this into a series is because a lot of times we hear about goals in personal development, and I feel like this topic kind of gets brushed over to the point where people are very confused about goal setting and what it means and what it's about. And, you know, me as an authenticity coach, I'm here to not just help people set goals for themselves and achieve it. I'm here to make sure that people are setting goals for themselves that are authentically for them and aligned with what they truly value in life and what is most important for them in life and the mission that they are authentically here for. And I want to begin the series today with talking about what goals are versus what vision and dreaming is and why the trust that is built in authenticity is so crucial for this process. So let's start off here. Guys, this is going to be a little bit different than how I typically do my podcasts. (laughs) Starting off, I want to say that because typically speaking, I type out, you know, 20 page outlines of how I want to talk to you all about things because I'm doing a lot of research and trying to figure out everything that I want to talk about. And um, I'm usually approaching topics that aren't necessarily like my specialty as far as what I coach in, but they relate to the things that I coach people on. Authenticity is the core of what I coach on. I am an authenticity coach. My coaching program is based in authenticity. I call it authenticity coaching. Um, so this is my wheelhouse here, which means I'm talking to you guys directly from my heart here. There's no outline. There is no script. This is me talking to you all about something that is so important for me, something that I know is so important for your lives as well, and something that I have been working and helping people with for the last 10 years. And I've got a ton of experience, a ton of insight, and a ton of also opinions and beliefs about this. And I want to share that with you all in a way where it is about me offering to you all something to consider, something to think about, something to inspire you to really think about how this is going to show up authentically for you in your life and setting authentic goals for yourself. So starting off, let's kind of decipher the difference between goals versus dreams and visions or missions for life. So dreams, visions, missions, these can all kind of like go in one territory, whereas goals go in another territory. And I feel like goals often get lumped in with dreams and visions for life. And this can be really frustrating for people because of what the purpose of goals actually is. If you substitute it for dreams and vision in life, it's going to feel very frustrating for you. So let's define these. Let's kind of talk about the difference between the two. So when we talk about dreams, when we talk about having a vision for our life, it's about thinking. If I were to look at my life and think, when do I plan to die? And that's something I want you all to get comfortable with thinking about. Every single one of us has 
an amount of time that we will be here on this planet. We have a number of years. There's no escaping that. The human body is designed to die at some point in time. Now, what you believe as far as who you are beyond this human body and what happens after that, that's a totally different discussion. But when we're talking about this life, and we're talking about having a vision, a dream for this life, it starts with us asking this question to ourselves and being comfortable with really feeling and thinking and experiencing ourselves evaluating this question. How long do I want to be here? How long do I plan on living on this planet? Do you plan on living to be 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old, 100? Maybe you want to try and live to 110. I don't know. What is that number for you? How long do you want to live on this planet? How long do you want to be in this life, in the body that you are in, experiencing life through that body? Have you ever thought to answer that question for you? It's an important question to answer. It's an important question to answer that we're sort of taught to avoid and not think about because it's uncomfortable to think about death, right? We want to focus on living. But the truth is, if we haven't considered our own death and come to terms with the fact that it is a reality for our life and that it will inevitably happen, if we don't look at our lives and our vision for life and our dreams for life with that in mind, then our visions and our dreams for life are already inauthentic. They're already inauthentic because we have not made the decision for ourselves of how long we plan to be alive. Now, how long you actually live it could be a completely different story. Maybe you plan to be 85 years old when you die and you make it to 80. Maybe you plan to be 85 and you make it to 60. Maybe you plan to be 85 and you make it to 105. But the truth of the matter is, in order to have a, a clear vision and mission for life and a dream for what your life is going to be like, what you are here for, what at the end of your life you're going to have done and accomplished and said, I'm the person that did those things. If you don't have an idea of how long you plan on being on this planet to do that, how do you think you're going to plan how you're going to spend your time to make sure that those things are done during that amount of time. The truth is you can't. You can't. So when we talk about authentic goals, in order to even realize how we set authentic goals for ourselves, we first need to understand how we have an authentic vision, dream, and mission for our life. And to do that, we first want to come to terms with how long we plan on living in this life and why. Why do we want that? You know, we get signaled often by society that the goal of life is to just live as long as possible. But the truth is that doesn't have to be reality for everyone. I've had many conversations with clients of mine, real talk conversations with people, with my husband, with friends. How long do you really want to be on this planet? And believe it or not, some people genuinely think that they're, when, when they talk about their life, genuinely believe in want for their life, that they live to be 65, 70 years old. That's what they want to do. They want to live to be 65, maybe 70 years old, and they want to, by the end of that time, have done amazing things with that 65 or 70 years. And then after that, they're kind of like, I, I don't have an authentic want to be here after that. I don't, I, I mean, whether or not they make it to live and be 85 years old, they might, they very well might. But when they think about their mission, their vision for life, they're putting the, the stopping point, the point where they say, okay, by this time, when I think about my vision for life, I'm going to have done these things. And that's important, an important question to consider and to really think about what you authentically want there. Because the truth is, that's how we plan our time, going back to exactly where we are now. If you're, I don't know, I'm 38 years old, so say you're 38 too. And you plan, like me, to live to be 85. That is the age at which I plan to end, not, not like literally I'm going to kill myself at 85, but I plan on my life being done at 85. I plan by the age of 85, I'm going to have done what I really want to do in this life. I'm going to have lived the life I want by the time I'm 85 years old. If I get bonus years on top of that, so be it. If I make it to 80, so be it. But the truth is, I plan on authentically living to be 85 years old. 
So if I'm 38 and I can envision that at the end of my life, this is what I've spent my time doing. This is what I've accomplished. This is what people will say about me when I'm gone. This is what people will know that I've done when I'm gone. When I think about that, I can go back to exactly where I am at the age of 38. Where am I with my emotional experience of life? Where am I with my physical experience of life? Where am I with my current actions in life and the results that I'm creating in life? I can start right there and say, I've got this amount of time to create that result by 85. So if I've got that amount of time to create that result by 85, how did I do it? That's a powerful question to ask yourself, my friends. Think about that. I'm not asking myself, how am I going to do it? I'm asking myself, how did I do it? So at 85, it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. I did it. I did the things that I wanted to do. I believe in myself that I will have done the things that I wanted to do at 85. And what I'm doing right now is remembering how I did it. I believe it's like it's a, it's a fact for me. At 85, I've done this. And it's so much of a fact for me that I can ask myself right now, what did I do in this moment to have accomplished that at 85? And my friends, it makes a massive difference at how you look at the actions you're taking right now. Not what should I be doing? What do I need to be doing? What, what do I have to be doing? You know, what am I going to be doing? It's what did I do in this moment that at 85 produced the results now that will get me there at 85? What did I do right now? And when you can come at it from that approach, it's completely different the actions that you will consider because it's, you're not like, oh, I don't know if I'll get there. So maybe I should try this. Maybe I should. there's no considering, there's no negotiating, there's no questioning. You are the person that did those things at the age at which you plan to no longer be on this planet. So what did you do in this moment to make sure that that happened? What did you do? What did you do? Give it as a gift to your future self that already exists. And you're just remembering how you are that person and do it. So back to the question, the difference between a vision, a dream, a mission in life versus a goal. When we talk about a vision, a dream for our life, it's we imagine we're at that time. We're at the end of our life. We've, I, I even guide my, my clients through a process of imagining their own funeral. So you're dead. You're no longer alive. Who's at your funeral? What did you do? What did you accomplish? What are people saying about you? What is the story of your life at that age when you died? That is a vision for your life. That's having a vision for your life. Being able to really just close your eyes and envision that and being able to see I'm the person that did this by this time. And when I'm dead, this will have been my story. This is what I am here in this world to accomplish and express in this life. I am that person. And I'm remembering how I did it. That's having a vision for your life. Having a dream for your life is the imagining process of what all could be possible for you. What all could be possible if you experience your fullest potential and then envisioning yourself having done those things. You're already there. That's a dream. That's a vision for your life. And when we talk about a life mission, what we're talking about is a purpose behind what we did. What were we doing all of this for? What were we wanting to leave behind? What were we wanting to contribute to the world? That's our life mission. When we talk about goals, goals are the guideposts. They are the signs along the way that we will pass to let us know you're remembering, you're on that path to remembering how you did it. We set goals for ourselves to remind us the path that we're on and to remind us where we are heading and why we're doing it and to signal to us you are doing it. You're remembering how you did it. So this is really important to understand right there is the difference between goals and vision and dreaming. And the reason this is important to understand is because so many of us set goals as if it's, I'm going to accomplish this. And then once I accomplish that, I'll be happy in life. Life will be good. I will feel this way about myself. And it's like, it's a period. And I'm here to tell you all, goals are commas. 
Goals are commas. The purpose of goals is not achieving them. The purpose of goals is not once, oh, I'm going to get there and I'm going to feel better about my life. The purpose of goals is to pull us in the direction of the vision, the dream, the mission we have for our life. So when we're talking about authentic goals, we can't set authentic goals for ourselves if we don't authentically know what that mission is, if we don't authentically know what that vision is for ourselves. So how do we set an authentic vision, an authentic dream, an authentic mission for ourselves? The truth of the matter is, for most of you out there, unless you've been doing work around this, it's not the vision that you have for your life, even if you have one, is not authentic. And this is why I do the coaching that I do, is because I want you to begin to consider how much of your vision of life, what you're going to have accomplished, what, why you did it and what you're here for. How much of that vision is based in a story that someone else handed to you or societal pressure handed to you and said, this is what's possible for you. This is what you are. This is who you are. And this is what you're allowed to and can do in this life. How much of your vision for life is based in a story that was handed to you in this way? I want you to consider that. The reason why this is important to consider is because depending on how much of that story hasn't been decided by you is what you want for, for life. Not what you should want, not what you have to want, not what you can want, but what you want for life. If that has not been authentically decided by you, then your vision for life is full of inauthenticity. And the more inauthenticity you have in that vision, the more inauthenticity you're going to have in the goals that you set along the way to guide you in the direction of that vision. And the more inauthentic the goals are that you set for your life, the more you are going to experience the symptoms. And I mean, I'm talking crippling symptoms of inauthenticity in your life. And I'm talking things like people pleasing, like overwhelm, burnout, emotional eating, emotional drinking, addictive behaviors, procrastination, distraction, all of these being simple symptoms of an inauthentic life. And they, when, we, when we're out there trying to set goals for ourselves and head in directions in life based on an inauthentic vision, and therefore we're setting inauthentic guideposts along the way, those symptoms show up more numerously and more intensely in our life the longer that we do this. And what I want to offer you all today is to begin considering how much you might be doing this in your life. And the reason why authenticity is so important in this process is because authenticity is about rebuilding that trust with ourselves that is necessary to really show up for that vision and those goals in life unstoppably and consistently. And this is sort of the theme of this episode, my friends, that I really want to get across today is that for many of you out there, you have been living with such an inauthentic story about what is possible for you in life that was handed to you by others or pressured into you by society, that your vision of life is so inauthentic then your goals are so inauthentic in life that there is a part of you that doesn't trust you to see what it is that you truly want in life. And the journey of authenticity is about peeling back those layers of inauthenticity and restoring that trust in yourself to hold and to see and to be responsible for the beautiful and powerful mission and vision of your life that is your truest potential. So many of my clients and so many of you out there have been living lives with inauthentic visions and inauthentic dreams and inauthentic goals for so long that you don't trust yourself to see your own authentic vision, mission, and goals in life anymore. And there's a good reason why. Because every time you would try and let yourself see it, you would begin telling yourself why that's not possible for you, why you can't do it, or you don't understand why it's a goal for you or how you're going to accomplish it. And so you end up not showing up for those goals, for that mission, for that vision in life. And what ends up happening is your brain begins to create an identity 
That's what our brain does. Our brain is really good at that. Our brains love identities in this life. Now, the truth is the identity that we have in this life is not us. It's an identity that's made up by the brain. That's called the ego. But it's necessary in this life for our brain to have an identity. It's how it functions. And as human beings, we are responsible for having a human brain that wants an identity. But the truth is, so many of us have let that brain tell us what that identity is based in what other people have told us that identity should be. And so therefore, the stories that we've lived in have been based in all of that. And then our brain has created an inauthentic identity for us but it has created an identity. And for so many of you, because the story of life, the vision, the mission, the goals in life have been inauthentic for so long, that identity has been created by your brain as one of, I'm not someone who wants much out of life. I'm not someone who can do much with life. I'm not someone who's very motivated. I am an unmotivated person. I am a person who procrastinates. I am not someone who dreams. I am not someone who does a whole lot with my life. I am someone who only can do this with my life. I am someone... So many of you out there have these stories about your identity that are so limited from what your true potential is because you have this relationship of distrust with your true vision of life. And the reason why is because a long time ago, you started rejecting that vision. You started rejecting that dream. And the pain of that became so deep that your brain created an identity for you that excused that behavior, that excused that pain. And while living in that identity is painful, Your brain is familiar with how to deal with that pain. So your brain would rather you stay in an identity that limits what is possible for you in this life, that that is about not trusting yourself, that is about living a life in which you ignore so much potential, so much that you could be doing, so much self-love that you could be having for yourself, so much power that you have in your life, simply because your brain is familiar with that identity. Because it accepted a long time ago, okay, this person is rejecting their dreams, rejecting themselves, and what is truly important for them in life for the sake of fitting in over here and trying to get approval and trying to get love because they believe that they're, and your brain has created an identity in which you are conditionally worthy, in which you are conditionally loved, in which you are conditionally acceptable, and in which what is possible for you is defined by a story that is inauthentic. And... What I want to offer you today is that the journey of authenticity is about repairing that relationship and rebuilding that trust with yourself that you are someone who can see what it is that you truly want in life and feel the fear of uncertainty that comes up with that huge vision, that huge, powerful vision, and still show up and love yourself and accept yourself and know that you are the person that does those things. Even though you're remembering how, you're figuring it out, there's uncertainty there. You are the person that will have your back on that journey no matter what. Because you know that no matter what, you are the most lovable person. Just like everybody else on this planet. You are 100% lovable, 100% worthy, and you will always have your back and show up for it. Authenticity is the journey of rebuilding that relationship that you started rejecting and creating distrust in in your formative years of life. I want you all to begin to consider today, when you think about your life and you think about your vision of what is possible for you in this life, how much of that vision is based in a relationship of you not trusting you to handle your true vision of life, your true potential in life, because you're afraid that you won't follow through. You're afraid that you're just a person that doesn't have motivation. You're just a person who's not powerful enough. And how much of that identity is based in a story that was handed to you by someone else that also had limited their beliefs about what was possible for them because they rejected their vision of life, their dream of life, their mission in life at an early age too, and started building a relationship of distrust. How much, how many people on this planet are handing these stories off to their kids? How many of us out there were handed these stories off from our parents because they were handed it from their parents because they were handed it from their parents? All because people started rejecting their dreams and believing what was more important in life is getting approval out there to prove that they were worthy, 
to be here on this planet and do the thing that they were here to do. I don't know when it all started. I don't know if we'll ever know when it all started. But the truth is, it did start. Somewhere along the lines, humanity started doubting itself, started believing that there needed to be limitations to their dreams about what was possible in this life, limitations to their worthiness and their lovability, limitations to their acceptability, and therefore what they should and can and have to do in this life. And the journey of authenticity is about peeling those stories away. And the beauty of that is, is when we do this in our own lives, we create a ripple effect that starts allowing the people in our lives around us to see that it's possible for them. And my friends, I am here because I want more people on this planet doing this. I want more people on this planet removing those inauthentic stories that limited them, that caused them to start self-rejecting at an early age, that caused them to form an identity for themselves that was about not trusting themselves because they can't, they shouldn't, they don't, they have to do these things over here instead. I want more people showing up in this life, having a clear, authentic vision of what they want in life and how they genuinely want to contribute to this life and to humanity and to the world how they want to, not because of what they've been told is possible for them, but because of what they know is possible for them before that story of limiting beliefs came in. And my friends, the more people we have on this planet doing that, the more potential we unlock for humanity. All of the, the, the inventions that we've had in the last 100, 200, 300, 1,000 years have come from people that dared to do this, that dared to say, I see what you're telling me has to be true about life, but I'm going to say, no, that doesn't have to be true for me. And I'm going to get out here and I'm going to explore the chaos and the uncertainty around those beliefs that you're telling me have to be true. I'm going to explore and I'm going to find what can be true for me when I stop rejecting myself And I start rejecting these limiting beliefs that don't have to be true about me. When I start rejecting these false identities that social pressure is trying to place on me. When I start rejecting those instead of rejecting myself, I want to see what's truly possible in this life. Every invention, every innovation we have in this life is because someone was willing to do that. And what I'm here to say is that every single freaking one of us on this planet has that potential inside of them. And yet only 1% of the world is out there living up to that potential. And the more you try and blame your circumstances in life, rather than seeing that you, you, my friends, have responsibility in this. At some point in time, you chose to start rejecting yourself. I'm not saying you're to blame, but you are responsible for that. And the sooner you see that, and the sooner you see you can stop rejecting yourself now and write a a new story, the sooner we're going to have more people on this planet than 1% of the population that are out there creating the mind-blowing inventions and innovations that make this life incredible for us as humans, that explode the potential of what is possible for us as humans that explode the possibility of how we can care for other people and health and the health of our planet. We need more than 1% of the world living up to their potential, my friends. And it starts with more than 1% of us healing that relationship of distrust with ourselves so that we allow ourselves again to be able to see and embody that vision of our life that is authentic for us, that mission for our life that is authentic for us, that is based in values that are authentic for us so that we can create authentic goals in our life that guide us to keep moving in that direction for the amount of time that we authentically plan to be in this life. My friends, goals and setting goals are all about having a true and authentic vision in life. Authentic goals do not happen without an authentic vision and an authentic dream for life, without an authentic mission for life that is based in authentic values. And authenticity is not going to reveal itself to you if you have a relationship of distrust with yourself that goes so deep that you don't even allow yourself to see that you don't trust yourself with your own vision of life anymore because you've been rejecting it for too long. I want to show you that it is possible to repair that relationship And see clearly again 
the beautiful and massive potential that lies inside of you, the beautiful vision and dream that lies inside of you that only you are capable of seeing on this planet. Nobody else on this planet can have the same dream and vision for life that you have because nobody else on this planet was born with the same sensitivities, same values as you, born in the same time by the same parents and have the same experiences and same interpretations of life that you have had for all of this time. Nobody else on this planet can offer what you can offer when you show up for your fullest potential. And the more of you that realize that and realize that your potential and what you are here to offer is worthy, that it is important, that it is valuable for this life, that we need it as humanity and wake up and stop accepting these inauthentic stories about life that are causing you to continue that relationship of distrust with yourself and continue to internally reject yourself. The more of you that wake up to this, the more we are going to blow our minds with the possibilities of humanity. All of the violence, all of the war, all of this craziness that we're seeing in life and we're feeling the disruption, we're feeling the the tension, we're feeling the reactivity of people on this planet it is because so many of us have bought into these inauthentic stories and so many of us are living inauthentic lives that the symptoms of inauthenticity are so vast and so intense in people's lives that we're just leaking the, the, the crippling effects of inauthenticity all over life around us. And I want to offer to each and every one of you that we can put an end to this one by one. And the more of us that show up on this planet, understanding our authentic vision for life, our authentic mission for life, our authentic dreams, our authentic values, and therefore our authentic goals, the better off all of humanity is, not just your life, all of humanity. Seeing your your truest and most authentic vision of life is not selfish. It is the most selfless thing that you can do to put yourself out there and stop rejecting yourself. Stop being afraid of the uncertain for the sake of having an inauthentic and fake identity that is creating suffering for you and everyone around you. Stop doing that. And so many of us on this planet are doing this. And I'm here to call you all out on it. And I'm here to offer for you all that there is another way. And I'm here to show it to you when you're ready. But today, what I want you to take from this podcast, I want you to think about how you've been setting goals in your life. How many times have you noticed yourself yo-yoing on your goals, starting goals and then stopping, starting goals and then stopping, procrastinating on your goals, distracting yourself from your goals, people pleasing and then therefore not following through on your goals? How often do you see yourself planning things and then not following through on your plans? How little do you trust yourself to actually follow through on what you say you're going to do? How much people pleasing is in your life? How much emotional eating and drinking is in your life? How much addictive behavior is in your life? How much are you spending time scrolling through social media instead of writing the book, instead of getting out there and working on the program, instead of in working on the invention that you have in your head, instead of seeing the authentic vision and dream of your life? How much time are you wasting doing these activities that are simply symptoms of an inauthentic story in your life? How much are you doing that? Wake up and see that you have potential in you, that you are not even able to comprehend simply because your mind is so busy living in an inauthentic story and you are letting it run you in your life. So as we start this series on authentic goals, first episode, I'm calling you all to wake up and recognize that there is a difference between goals and having a dream and vision in life. And wake up to see that if you have been living an inauthentic story of life, then you don't have the relationship of trust with yourself to be able to see your authentic vision, your authentic dream of life. And that it's time to get authentic, to get on that journey of authenticity, to be able to build that trust with yourself. Again, in order to be able to see your authentic vision, your authentic mission, your authentic values and dreams for life, so that you can start creating authentic goals. So remember, our vision for life is about us coming to terms with the fact that we are dying. We are going to die. That is a fact. It's not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing about life. We have a certain amount of time on this planet, and we have potential to fill that time with so much 
But if you're not showing up for yourself, if you're not trusting yourself to show up for yourself and advocate for yourself in your truest potential, you're not spending that time to create your authentic vision, mission, and dream in life. You are busy living an inauthentic story that someone else handed to you. And your goals will reflect that. And your inability to follow through on them will reflect that. So that's what I have for you all today. I'm calling you all out. If we're going to be setting authentic goals, we first of all need an authentic vision for life. We need an authentic mission. We need an authentic dream. And I'm here to tell you that to begin doing that, we need to establish a relationship of trust that only comes through authenticity, through being willing to peel back the certainty of the inauthentic story that we have accepted and explore the uncertain of the authentic story that lives underneath and bring that out into life and express it around us and create the identity for ourselves in this life that we are designed for, not the one that we've accepted. That's what authentic goal setting is all about. You're not going to set authentic goals if you're living from an inauthentic identity based in an inauthentic story of life. It's time to reestablish the trust. It's time to get on the journey to authenticity. So that's what I've got for you all at the start of this series on authenticity. Next week, Next week, I'm going to be bringing part two to you all. And in part two, we're going to talk about establishing an authentic why for our goals and for our vision in life. It's it's very crucial that, that we establish an authentic why. And I'm going to talk to you all next week about why that is and how we do it. And then we'll move on to the third part of the series, which is authentic action. So stay tuned over the next three weeks. You don't want to miss this, guys. This is what life is really all about. It's about us showing up for ourselves and seeing our true vision and mission in life, our authentic mission in life, and being able to set authentic goals that guide us in the direction of that authentic vision. And I'm here in this three-part series to start bringing some awareness to you all about why it is that you all have been struggling maybe with your goals. I know at this time of year, it's February, at the end of, I'm sorry, it's the beginning of March now. This is the time of year that I see most people giving up on their goals and feeling frustrated or thinking, you know, it's pointless to set goals and going back to the same old behaviors before. And a lot of this, 90% or more of this has to do with the fact that the goals that people are setting at the beginning of the year are inauthentic goals based in an inauthentic story, based in an inauthentic vision of life. So if you want to know why you keep doing this, if you want to know why you keep procrastinating and distracting yourself from your dreams or goals, this is probably it. So you want to pay attention to the series because I'm going to break it all down for you all help bring some awareness to you all. Awareness is the first step to change. It's not the only step to change. That's what coaching is for, is to bring the awareness and put it into action. But I'm going to bring you all some awareness here of why this could be happening in your life and what we're wanting to do differently. And for those of you who are ready to be like, yeah, that's what I want. I'm ready to put this into action. Guys, I want you to head over to my website. I've got a coaching program designed specifically for this right here. Authenticity coaching is what I offer. I've got two coaching offers for you all. You've got the Authentic Trailblazer and the Master of Authenticity. Go check them out. Go check out my video on my website at www.lifecoachseth.com where I'm going to explain to you all what authenticity coaching is all about and how it's going to help you and how it's going to get you on the path to being able to create an authentic vision for your life and therefore authentic goals. All right, I love you all. I hope you today understand now the difference between goals versus a vision in life and why authenticity is important and why trust is a must when it comes to setting goals for ourselves in life, ones that we're going to consistently follow. All right. I love you all. And I'll talk to you again here next week. Ciao. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the content of this podcast. If you did, please subscribe so that you're one of the first people to know when I release a new episode each week. If you have any questions or if you have interest in learning more about the coaching that I do with my clients one-on-one, then just head over to my website at www.lifecoachseth.com. That's www.lifecoachseth.com. There you're going to have the ability to reach out to me for questions that you might have or to book your free discovery call with me to discuss what one-on-one coaching with me might be like for you. You can also check out and order your copy of my book to get a taste of what I'm all about as a person and as a coach. I'm so happy that you joined us today and I hope to have you here again next week. So until then, let authenticity be the guide to your most unstoppable and fulfilling journey of life.
Oh, 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 oh,